In this video, I'm gonna show you what happened when I shot this classic roll of Agfa APX100, which expired in 2009. It's been frozen all that time. So I've got quite a few rolls of this film and I wanna see if it still works. So I'm gonna use my Yashica 124 Mat G, which is a six x six medium format camera and a nice light camera to walk around with. So I've also got another roll of film, which it looks like older packaging. So maybe you guys can let me know in the comments just by looking at the packaging. Is this the original APX 100 Agfa pan from 1989 to 2005? I think it might be, but there's no box with this film and there's no date on the foil, unlike the 2009 roll. But anyway, I'm gonna shoot both rolls and see what I get. On the big film database, it suggests that Kentmere dabbled with the name and stamped new emulsion on the box. And then in 2006 to 2012, it suggests that there was some of the original floating about, which was probably frozen from 2005. And then from 2013 up to now, we're back on the Kentmere train. Who knows, it's all hearsay. And if you wanna win these two rolls to try out for yourself and also a print from this video, stick around to the end and I'll tell you how. So I've come down to the old train station to take my photographs. I've got the camera there. Inside that camera, I've already got that roll of 2009 APX. And in my hand, I've got the other one, which I think is older. Hopefully by now, someone said something in the comments if this is that original APX from 89 to 2005. But I'm gonna shoot this as well. So I've got 12 shots on this, 12 shots on this. And around this train station, I've got lots of opportunity, different angles, different lines and stuff. So I'm just gonna be working with lines and angles um, and see what I can come up with. I've got my light meter. I'm gonna overexpose both of these films just by one stop. I'm not gonna follow the rule of one stop every decade. I never do that. If I get expired film, I just usually shoot it one stop over uh, just to be on the side of precaution. I'd rather do that than get an underexposed film uh, from where the sensitivity has been lost over the years. But hopefully where these both have been frozen, I shouldn't really lose much. If I was to shoot a 30 year old expired 400 speed film that had not been frozen, the chances are the silver in the emulsion would have degraded losing its film speed. So instead of a 400 ISO film, over time the film's sensitivity possibly would have dropped. If I meter for 400 at the box speed and the film has lost speed, then my photographs are going to be underexposed. That is why people say you should overexpose your film one stop per decade. It is a rule of thumb, but it's not always the case. It depends on the quality of the film and how it's been stored. So all I'm going to do is just run around this train station and get some photographs of uh, just some interesting angles and some interesting lines and uh, stuff in the foreground and all that, like this bench, the background. So I'm just going to try and get some interesting angles and I'm shooting six by six medium format. Hopefully I don't waste these two rolls of film. If I can get a couple of photographs or a couple of prints out of both films, then I'm happy, it'll be okay. And that's the thing with expired film. You never know what you're gonna get. It's always a lottery. It all depends on how it's been stored. You know, you get some expired film which appears to be cheap online. It might have said it's been frozen, etc., etc. But even then, it could have been stored in a, in a shed, in a warm shed over God knows how many decades. Uh, by the time you shoot it, it's rubbish. You go back to the person, you go, mate, this doesn't work. You go, well, it is expired. It was frozen. <laughs> I mean, you've got no argument at all. So expired film is always a lottery. And the worst case scenario that I've always found is um, obviously loss of sensitivity. So you get really thin negatives. And other times, the base of the film also is very heavy and very foggy. Uh, I had that once with some HP5. I had a whole brick of HP5. HP5 and only just gone out of date by a couple of years but it must have been stored so bad because the whole base of each film was very dark and it just didn't look nice so that must have been really stored bad but hopefully this stuff will be all right today and if any of you guys follow my channel sometimes I put little posts up on the community area and I did so I did a little vote on expired film I just wanted to know how many of you guys were shooting expired film and the poll went like this 27% of you have never tried 5% said they always shoot film 59% if it's cheap, why not? And 9% did once, never again. 
And I get that, you did it once, you know, you may have had three or four different expired films over the time and they've all been rubbish, you just think, you know what, I'm not gonna waste my time with expired film. And there's also about 30 or so comments linked on that thread. So uh, if you wanna jump on there, if you're interested, have a little read through the comments. Some people's comments are quite interesting, what they've been saying. Six, four, 12, 11, Southeastern, service to Graves End, via Sitka. Calling at New Alton, Sitka. And what I haven't mentioned so far is when I loaded the film inside the camera, I went to frame one and I exposed it under a bright light. That will give that first frame total overexposure, almost a leader effect. So later on when I come around to developing my film, I can evaluate that leader just to make sure that my development was okay because without that I wouldn't be able to see if I'd underdeveloped or overdeveloped. I wouldn't know where to go, so I can at least take that out of the equation if this film's gonna be okay going forward. That's why I did it. So here's the moment of truth. Got both films uh, exposed now. This is the one that I think's older. This is the one from 2000 and, uh, 2009. So this is what I think is an older one. Definitely different packaging, look. Uh, I'll show you guys the paper backings on these in a moment uh, once I've got these developed. But uh, first of all, Let's develop the 2009 one and see how that comes out. I'll show you the negatives in a moment. So like I said, I'm using Rodnol for my development, one part to 50. I looked on the massive dev chart for a quick bit of guidance uh, and that's given me 10 minutes of developing time. So I'm just gonna develop my film normally. I'll give it 15 seconds of inversions to start and then um, five inversions every minute. So in goes the Rodnell and get me development started and I'll start the clock now and invert for 15 seconds. So that's the first one done, that's the 2009 roll. I'm now going to put the, which I think is older, roll into the camera and uh, take a, a few more pictures. So I'm now in the underpass section. This is a footpath that goes over the other side uh, of the railway station. Uh, nice subdued light under here. Uh, there's the film. Take it out, go and do it all again. So I'll do the same again as what I did with the other film, just overexpose that first exposure. Um, stick it in bold mode, point it towards that light up there. Right, so. So that's completely overexposing that frame. But the trouble is, it's possibly gonna bleed into the next frame. So um, one more frame and then I'll be started. So I'll start on frame three. So that second frame there, I'll probably have a little bit of bleed. I don't know, I have done in the past, so uh, just need to make sure that I don't shoot that next frame on anything decent. So here we have the uh, 2009 APX, moment of truth. Hopefully these have come out okay. But I'll soon see from the leader that I made myself. Whoa, look at that. Wow. I didn't bleed into the next frame either, like I thought. Uh, the leader could have been a little bit darker, which makes me feel like I could have gone another minute on the development, but mate, they have come out absolutely mustard. Let's do the other one and we'll put them side by side, see what the other one looks like. Even the base doesn't look heavy. Uh, it looks normal, nice and clear, transparent. Wow, I'm impressed. And here comes that other roll of APX, which I think is older than 2009. Um, the seven of these. <laughs> these are nice as well. I'll have to get these in the light box, let them dry. But the um, when I put out, pulled the developer out and uh, got that washed away, it was exactly the same colour as this one, real deep purple. So the base on this film looks a little bit heavier, which would possibly be because the film's a lot older. But uh, we'll let them dry out and have a look at them on the light box. 
So I've got the negatives on the light box. This is what I think is the older APX. This is the 2009 one. These are the two leaders that I made. So from these, I can see if my development was okay. I think I could have gone another couple of minutes in the rod no. Um, I've got a piece of paper underneath that and you can just see through it on the light box. I'd like that to have been a little bit darker. That's where the paper is there, you can see it. And that's how um, thin the leaders are. That should be darker than that. I like it darker than that anyway. I'm not sure how well it's being picked up on the video, guys. Um, but it's certainly the the base or the fog of the film on the what I think is the older one is slightly, slightly heavier than the 2009 one. Without a dense tometer, I'm not going to have a clue. And I did show you the backing paper as well. This is the 2009 backing paper, and this is the other one. They're identical, they're exactly the same. There's no difference at all. And we look up the other end of the scale as well. Look, there's a 2009 one, and that's the one that I think is older, but exactly the same backing papers. So maybe the two films that I've got are the original APX, and they were just frozen from 2005 and redistributed. I don't know. I'm really surprised that they've come out as well as they have and it's quite exciting to know that if that's the case then I could go ahead and use these films and uh, get some nice photographs. Let's take one of these negatives in the dark room, make a print and see how they print. So I'm well happy that film actually works. I've got a few rolls left in the freezer to play around with. I do need to increase the development time slightly, so I'm glad that I did that leader test at the start of both films. Next time I shoot that film, I know maybe to go 12, 13, maybe 14 minutes and really get some density out of it. And relatively easy to print as well. I made this print for myself. This is a 10 by 10 print that I made of the bench. I like the way the symmetry goes on the, um, on the handles there. And just a little, I used a two and a half grade filter and a contrast five just to boost the contrast a little bit and a little tiny bit of vignette around the edge. Pretty much easy to print, so those negatives are okay to print. And I did say at the start of the video, I'm going to give two rolls of this film away, exactly what I had, the 2009, and also um, what I thought was the older one. It might be from the same batch, I don't know, but they're certainly different in look. And uh, a print as well, I've made a print. So I'm going to give these three items away. All you've got to do is let me know in the comments what the name of the rail company is, where I was. It's on the side of the train. Let us know in the comments and I'll get these off to you once I've selected a winner. And I've got to say a massive thank you to Mark Cumston for sending me these expired films. I've got another one here which uh, was from Mark and it's called a Classic Pan 100. I've not got a clue what this stuff is actually. It's there. Um, I'll have a little play with this at some point. So Mark, if you're watching, thank you very much. And guys, let us know if your experience with that APX, did you shoot that back in the day between 89 and 2005? Is that packaging from that original time? Or have I got here the stuff that was frozen after AGFA discontinued it? They must have had a ton of stock that, that I read that was frozen down and, and distributed out. So is that the stuff that I've, I don't know. Um, other than that, it works and I've got some rolls of film to play with. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports the channel and I'll catch you next time.